With eight number one albums and countless different awards won, Oasis were on top of the world. However, like every success story, failure must come at some point, and Oasis' failure came through the Gallagher brothers struggling to work together. Over the next 15 minutes, we'll learn about Oasis' rapid rise to the top, and more specifically, where did it all go wrong? Back in 1991, four lads from Manchester formed the band The Rain. The original four members of the band were Paul McGuigan, Paul Arthurs, Tony McCarroll and Chris Hutton. Three of those members went on to form Oasis, the one outcast however was Chris Hutton, who was quickly replaced from lead vocals by someone named Liam Gallagher. Liam came in and immediately made change, with the biggest change being the name of the band. His brother Noel was a huge fan of music, particularly in spiral carpets and had a tour poster above his bed, with one of those dates being in Swindon at Oasis Leisure Centre. This is the most well known story, however Liam claims the band were also named after a clothes shop and taxi rank in Manchester, both sharing the name Oasis. Either way, the name will forever be iconic in British and worldwide culture. The original band formation was nearly complete. All that was missing was the most important piece, Noel. At the time of the band's formation, Noel Gallagher was a roadie for fellow Manchester band in Spiral Carpet, and when he caught a break, he supported his younger brother at Oasis' first ever gig at the Boardwalk Club in Manchester, where they played Bottom of a Bill to the Catchman and Sweet Jesus. Despite Noel and in Spiral Carpets thinking the band didn't sound particularly spectacular, Noel saw it as a potential outlet for songs he had previously written and decided that he would join the band on the basis that he would be the sole songwriter and leader. After a year and a half of playing together as the full band, Oasis got their break with company Creation Records. Oasis had been invited to play at King Tut's Wawa Hut in Glasgow. So we were like really pleased though, because I was like sort of quite cocky, I suppose, and just, you know, we were like really pleased that we got this gig. So I walked into the practice room and Noel, they were just packing up and I sort of remember saying to Noel, aha, we've got a gig in Glasgow, you know, kind of thing, like showing off. And he just, I don't know what it was, he just sort of looked up and some knee-jerk reaction, I was just like, oh, why don't you do it? And it really was, that's how it happened. And However, on arrival, we're not let in due to their name not being on the set. Sister lovers, who they shared a rehearsal space with, told the showrunners that they wouldn't play if Oasis weren't given the chance to play. You know, they're not on the bill, they're not playing. And, and then it was like, we were sort of third on the bill. So we were like, well, if they, they're not playing, we're not. And then I think Boyfriend, the next band on, were of the same mind. So it's a bit like solidarity you know, together of like, yeah, we're not going to, you know, we're, none of us are going to, you're not going to have a gig if you don't let them play. Eventually Oasis were added to a bill and the band played some of their best songs. Rock and Roll Star, Bring It On Down, Up In The Sky and a cover of the Beatles' I'm The War. Creation Records owner Alan McGee was in attendance as it was Debbie Turner of Sister Lover's first gig. However, I ended up stumbling on Oasis and the rest was history. You know, Alan had come there to see me because it was like my first gig. Um, and, you know, he just was blown away. But like I say, when, you, when you're very close to something, you can't really see the potential as much. Supersonic was their first single released in anticipation to their debut album, Definitely Maybe. Shake Maker and Live Forever followed suit in being released as singles before the album's release. The album was a huge success, with it hitting the number one spot in the charts within a week and became the fastest selling debut album in the UK. With this rapid success nearly came a rapid end, when the band played in Los Angeles in 1994. During this period of the band, there was a high drug usage, and when the band asked for cocaine ahead of this gig, they received crystal meth instead. The gig went on to be a total mess, with Liam throwing a tambourine at Noel during the gig, as well as making offensive remarks about American crowds. Following the gig, Noel flew to San Francisco and stayed there for a short period of time and it has been said that this is where the song Talk Tonight was written. 
Oasis would hit their first number one song in April 1995, with Some Might Say. However, during this month, drummer Tony McCarroll left the band and was replaced by Paul Weller recommended Alan White. Following on from their number one single, Oasis began recording for their next album in May 1995. The Battle of Britpop was next to Oasis, facing up against London's Blur, with a rivalry peaking when the two bands released singles on the same day. However, Blur took the crown with this one, Country House selling 274,000 and Roll With It selling 216,000 copies. The next band and member to leave was Paul McGuigan, however his replacement, Scott McGloyd's tenure was short-lasted and McGuigan soon joined the band once again. Their second studio album, What's a Story Morning Glory, was released in October 1995 and was an immediate success once again, selling over 4 million copies and becoming the fifth best-selling album in UK history. Nineteen ninety six was a year largely dominated by live performances and no music output, with the band playing six huge gigs, two at Main Road, two at Loch Lomond, and two at Nebworth Park, with Nebworth Park having two hundred and fifty thousand people in attendance and two point five million applying for tickets. These two gigs are considered some of the best of all time and led to an album and film being released in 2021. The next major gig for the band was MTV Unplugged, but Liam didn't play with the band that night and chose to watch from the balcony instead, heckling Noel who took the role of the lead singer. Liam refused to play the next few gigs until he returned to play the MTV Video Music Awards, going on to spit his drink out and make gestures at Noel during his guitar solo, leading to another row for the band and causing speculation among media once again for the band to split up. The band started recording their third album, Be Here Now, towards the end of the year in Abbey Road Studios and released in August 1997 and became the fastest selling album in UK history up until 2015 with 696,000 copies sold in the first week. Due to media controversies, the band stayed quiet throughout 1998. That was until they released The Master Plan, which was a compilation album of their best B-sides released to date. Nineteen ninety nine was the end of both Paul Arthur's and Paul McGuigan's tenure in the band, leaving just Noel and Liam left from the original five, with the brothers releasing a statement saying the future of Oasis is secure, the story and the glory will go on. Colin Archer became the lead and rhythm guitarist and Andy Bell became a bassist, despite never playing the bass guitar in his life. Nineteen ninety nine also marked the end of Creation Records, the record label that gave Oasis their chance. The band went on to form Big Brother Recordings in early two thousand. Oasis' fourth album to hit number one was Standing on the Shoulder of Giants, which was released in February 2000. This month also saw a new logo for the band, designed by Gem Archer, and the album included a song written by Liam, the first one to be released. During their European tour, Liam was drunk one night and began to question the legitimacy of Noel's daughter, Anais, causing Noel to walk out on the band and leave them for to finish the tour without him. The early years of the noughties were very quiet for Oasis, up until their next album, Heathen Chemistry, which was released in July 2002 and once again reached number one. We the people fight for our existence. The tour that followed the album was one to remember, as Noel, Andy Bell and a touring band member, Jay Darlington, were in a car accident in Indianapolis. And the European tour was cut short due to Liam, Alan White and another three of the band's entourage being arrested in a brawl in Munich, causing even more tension between the Gallagher brothers. Alan White was next to leave the band in 2004, with his brother claiming the spirit of being in a band had been kicked out of him. Zack Starkey came into the band but was never recognised as an official member, so for the first time in the band's history, they were a four-piece. Although the public's opinion on the band's music towards the later noughties went downhill, the band had less and less public feuds. 
This was until 2009. In April of 2009, Noel was quoted in an interview saying that Liam is the angriest man you'll ever meet. During that summer, Noel went on to claim that life would be easier without Oasis. August came around and Oasis were due to play at V Festival, however pulled out due to Liam having laryngitis. Noel on the other hand described it as a hangover, which kept Liam from performing, something that led to a lawsuit years later. It is with some sadness and great relief I quit Oasis tonight. People will write and say what they like, but I simply could not go on working with Liam a day longer. Six days later, after being due to play at the Rockin' Scene Festival in Paris, Noel had posted a statement on the Oasis website that he'd left the band due to his inability to work with his younger brother anymore. The remaining members formed BDI, who were truly never able to replicate the success of Oasis. With eight number one albums, Oasis will be remembered as one of, if not the biggest bands of all time, but could always be questioned as to what could have been for the band had the brothers got on throughout their life. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. Backbeat, the word is on the street that the fire in your heart is out. I'm sure you've heard it all before, but you never really had it down. Cause maybe